Good morning. It's Minister Paul. It's April 19th, 2013. What a powerful time we're having in the Lord. Let's go straight to prayer. Well, first of all, the Lord showed me how to fix my audio. And he gave me a word. He's a good guy. Father God, this morning I come to you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Thankful. Father God, I'm thankful that at the age of 15 you removed the scales off of my eyes and I once was was lost and now I'm fine. I, I, was, I was blind, but now I see things of you, Father God. And, and I'm trying to reach others and, and, and so are others here within the sound of my voice. We... We have lost loved ones, Father God, and we talk to them and talk to them and talk to them, and they can't. They, uh, Newton, Waltham, all of these south of Boston towns uh, that are basically. Father God, I think even that was for a reason. I'm, the TV just comes on and shows all these areas. Looks like apparently under a police state. You know, your word says when we see all these things to look up, but I've, I've been looking up for a long time. Um, but I also want to praise God. I also want to reach my loved ones before I go home, but it's your perfect will, and I want everybody to know that. It's your perfect will, not my will be done. I know it's your will that none should perish. But I also know there's free will that we make our own choices. It was first displayed by Adam and Eve in your holy word. They, they made a wrong decision. And the wages of that sin was death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus, our Lord and our Savior. Lord, give me the strength to put out this word. Give me the boldness to speak to my sister my father, my brother, and, and give my wife the strength to reach her sisters and her brothers and our aunts. And there's so many that, that need to hear this message. And let me constantly remind myself that they can't see what I see. They can't understand what I understand. But they can have their own Damascus experience where one day when they least expect it, they're walking. And the scales fall off of their eyes. And they begin to have a wisdom and a knowledge and an understanding of things that they couldn't see before, things of you. They become born again and receive the Holy Ghost. And we, we, we reap this final harvest and we go home. And I know that your ways are higher than our, my, our ways and your thoughts are higher than our thoughts. And, you know, Jesus gave us a road map of, of when he's returning and I'm looking at the road map right in front of me. And I'm not going to deny that. Moses talked to you all throughout the law. He, he, he talked to you. Several people with him talked to you. And we go into the book of prophets and they all talk to you and they all had dreams and they had all visions and trying to reach these people that don't believe in dreams and visions or numbers when it's all throughout the Bible. The third hour, the sixth hour, the ninth hour, the, you know, three days here, 40 years there, nine spiritual gifts, nine fruits of the spirit. Christ was 33 with a three-year ministry father God I see it all the earth was created in six days on the seventh day you rested seven trumpets I mean three woes seven this three that father God I just I see things and I, I wish that others could see it but I I'm just thankful that I do and that you've used me as a mouthpiece I will flow in your Holy Spirit and boldly proclaim everything you see to me. And I would ask that others would just receive it. And have their own Damascus experience. 
I thank you, Father God, for this revelation you're about to reveal. I remove myself, Father God, my flesh and my carnal nature and my stinking thinking of uh, worldly ways and my flesh. And I, I, I step out of the way so your Holy Spirit can come down and speak through me right now to go into your word to proclaim your glory and empower us. In Jesus' name, amen. Saints, a powerful thing happened. Rod for Sooners, he, he, he did have an account that never used, came in and he did confirm that in July, I did have a vision of an earthquake map. Now, I want you to really ask yourself in the Bible, was Moses given a sign? Um, was Did people like Daniel, was... Was he given visions of, you know, what was to come for like the next several years? And and just look at the word and forget what some of these naysayers are saying on YouTube. And and look at the word. Just go to the word. And, and you know, and I know a lot of people don't know the word. So I'm going to start teaching the word. Daniel had all kinds of dreams. He had so many dreams that kings would come to him. They made him a, 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 a president over several hundred, hundred, several other vice presidents, one of three in the book of Daniel 6 and 7. And, and he had dreams. And when they persecuted him, uh, told him he couldn't pray, he prayed anyway. Three times a day facing Jerusalem. And um, they threw him in the lion's den for praying. And... Uh, he encountered Christ who protected him like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They were in the fiery furnace, and when the, the king looked in there, same thing. He saw Jesus. He said, I see a fourth one in there. That was Jesus. He was there. He, he, he was talking to them. He was with them through the fiery trial and the fiery furnace. He was with Daniel in the lion's den, and he came, they came out like not even smelling a smoke. And Daniel came out without a scratch on him. But when they threw in the unbelievers who mocked them, uh, they were eaten. That's the holy word. That's not my opinion. Um, then you go through all these prophets prophesying about Christ coming uh, through dreams and visions and prophecy. And then Jesus Christ himself, he comes down. John the Baptist is already baptizing into what's called repentance. It was a water baptism because he was told by God. He heard from God. He was just a man born of a woman. He, he was baptizing, uh, operating in his calling. They must have thought he was crazy, but one thing they knew better to do was to go out there and try to arrest him because everything he would prophesy would come true. So... He's baptizing people into repentance and saying the kingdom of God is at hand and a Messiah is going to come. But, but you know why? Because he'd studied the word and he'd heard from God. He'd heard from God that a Savior was going to come and be born. Those wise men saw the star and they followed it and they presented unto him gifts and bowed down before him. And I mean, they journeyed far to go see this Messiah, this Savior of the world that John said, Behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. This Jesus, our Savior, he came down. Life came down and rescued us saints. He gave us life for us. He shed blood. It's real. You don't think John the Baptist talked with God? To, I mean, how many people would go in there and be beheaded? You got to have some serious faith. That's why he said that he sent, you know, he said, I'm just flowing. He said, to go, to go ask Jesus while he was in prison. Is he the one or should I wait for another? And Jesus didn't say, go tell him, of course I'm the one. Don't you know? He said, go and tell him what you see. Uh, you know, the lame walk, the, the, the blind see. People are being saved. The gospel's being preached. And then in Jesus, you know, so, so did he hear from God? Why was he baptizing in the repentance? Was he in the spirit of Elijah? The Elijah uh, that, that 
prophesied all these things and Isaiah spoke of his coming and Jesus came down and and totally just did everything in the book of Isaiah. I mean, this is real. Even for unbelievers, this is so real. And then Jesus, before he left, he said, I got to go. He said, he, will, he you know what he was doing? To go prepare mansions for us. But he said, before I go, I'm going to leave you the, the, the Holy Ghost. And with this Holy Ghost, you will receive power, Acts 2, 38 says, that, that you it, it would repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. And you will be saved. And then it talks about this. You will receive power. Read Acts 1 and 2. That's as far as you got to go and, and re learn about this power. You know what the power activates? The fruit of the Spirit, there's nine. And the gift of the Spirit, there's nine. Um, a lot of people are asking me, you know, about like the gifts. This is what I did at age 15. I was baptized in the name of Jesus. Um, I went in my room and water baptized. And then I, uh, the Holy Ghost fell upon me and I felt it. It was heat and hot and love. And I met Jesus the same way they did. We all meet the same Jesus. It's for all, the Bible says. It's for anyone willing to believe. So I meet Jesus. And um, and I went immediately to this room. I was living in San Jose, California. And, and I'm in, in a, we had like a two-bedroom apartment. My brother and mother were sitting out on the sofa. And I did a three-day fast of water only at the age of 15. And I began to, to weep and cry out. And, and, and pray on the third day for the word of knowledge. And you know what? I received the word of knowledge and the gift of prophecy. And it's been with me ever since and never left. God will not revoke his gifts. They may lie dormant at times, but he does not revoke his gifts. And these are the same gifts that are all throughout the Bible. And you see them everywhere. A lot of people are using them. But if you don't have them, the Bible says you have not because you ask not. Have you fasted and prayed and been asked to be baptized in the Holy Ghost? Went and got hands laid on you and, um, and then prayed for the gifts. Paul said, eagerly desire these gifts. If you have, then you're going to understand every single thing people are saying under the anointing and every single word of this holy word I'm about ready to read. And you're going to understand, I'm not lying when I tell you that I had a vision. People had visions and dreams throughout the Bible. Um, my vision, I've had a lot of visions. I mean, just that's clearly on my channel. But the vision I had, Rod for Sooners has came forward and confirmed that in July I told him I, had a, I saw a map of this earthquake. And I bet you anything, my audio's louder. Watch. Watch what Jesus is going to do in these last days. I'm going to get his word out. Um, yes, Lord, I will. I will. I saw this earthquake map, and it had a seven. Now, this was... This Now, trust me, I've been watching this earthquake map for a year straight. Well, at, at least since July, when I received the word of knowledge. I've been watching it, and it's never happened. There has never been a red 7-3 earthquake and a 3.7 earthquake at the same time. Trust me, me and Rod have both been watching daily. I mean daily. We even have apps on our phones that will show it. It's... That's why when I saw that yesterday, I weep. That was my sign that he said that he's coming. He's coming again. That's what he told me. He's coming again. A lot of people don't know, is the rapture like us being caught up? Or is it you just, you know, physically dying and being caught up? Either way with me, I'm being caught up to be with the Lord. And that was my sign. And all he said was, Behold, I come quickly. And that's what I woke up to this morning. He said, Behold, I come quickly. I heard it the first thing I woke up, 6.30 this morning. Lord said, Put out a word. And he gave me Acts 19, 
Um, so Rod, two people have confirmed the 7337 as a sign. Is there signs in the Bible? Yes, there's many signs in the Bible that point to his end. It doesn't say we know the day or hour, but people, it says that this generation shall not pass away till all these things be fulfilled. And then it gives you a timeline of 1948 of the fig tree. Read the parable of the fig tree. I mean, it's all in God's word. So let's go straight to this holy word and see what the Holy Spirit reveals to us. What I, I would long for us all to have, remember this is the fast, seven day fast. I think this is the fourth fast God has had me call since July 2012. Clearly he is up to something. Okay, so let's draw closer to him through prayer, fasting, and the word. Amen. And it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, which is a city, Paul is talking about the apostle. I'll put a link, everybody, if you have your Bible, it's Act 19. I wish I could do this on Blog Talk Live. Paul, having passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus and finding certain disciples. You know, you know what I like doing on these? I like, um, by the way, I'm doing my liquids, no breakfast. I like um, looking at maps. You've seen me do that a lot, and I've learned a lot. I mean, I, everybody, the Bible says we're supposed to want to learn things of him. So what I would do, like right now, I'd see uh, where Corinth is and where Ephesus is and, and see if you really want to know, you know, like uh, where Paul's journeys, I, I've mapped them all out. Or go to the back of your Bible. And it'll have maps called Paul's journeys. Any good Bible should have maps of the journeys Paul made. So he's on this journey for Christ. You know, he remember he was Saul. And then he encountered Christ on the road to Damascus, and and uh, and the scales were uh, fell off his eyes. Oh, after he went and met a man of God, let's remember that Ananias. And uh, he went and and immediately went down into to the uh, darker areas and spent uh, I think it's three years on his own, learning from God. Because he didn't want to go up to the disciples immediately, because he'd been, uh, uh, he, he his job was to kill Christians. Do you understand that? If he'd have went right up there and started talking to them, uh, I mean, God's timing is perfect. They they'd have been even Ananias was like, Are "You talking about the guy that's killing us? We're talking about Saul being converted to Paul. That's being born again, and then and then him receiving this Holy Ghost." And operating these gifts as an apostle, he can heal, lay hands on the sick. He has, you know, the gift of healing. All these are available to you is what I'm getting at. But only after you're baptized in the Holy Ghost. And I don't, I, I don't see a lot of people preaching that or teaching that. So I'm going to start trying to teach the best I can. I just reviewed a whole bunch of emails of a whole bunch of questions. I read emails for an hour this morning. And I'm going to try to answer some of them all through the word and this is what God gave me okay so uh, verse 2 he says he said unto them now now check this out this is a question he's talking now take note these aren't unbelievers it says they're disciples disciples in other words they're being taught the ways of the Lord they're being discipled here's his questions to them have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? Now, the reason why they called it the Holy Ghost back then is because you'd have to check out the Greek translation, spirit. I mean, if you remove holy and you just put spirit, you realize it's like, a, you know, like something that's supernatural. But this is a Holy Spirit. Back then it was ghost. The world has turned this into an evil world word, but that's what the the devil does. He just tries to mess up God's word. That's what he did with Jesus. He tried to, you know, um, manipulate and, and uh, quote out of context the, the word of God. 
you know, it is written and stuff. It really was written in the book of Deuteronomy when Satan uh, tempted Jesus three times while he was fasting 40 days in the wilderness. It really was written in Deuteronomy, like six and stuff. Go read it. But not like he said. And Jesus knew that. You know why? Because he was the word. It says, have you received the Holy Ghost? Now, here's the qualifier. Since you believed. They're disciples who already believe in Jesus Christ. And they're being discipled in the ways of him. and But they don't have the power. And you see this a lot on YouTube. They're saved. But they're not operating in the power that the church is supposed to operate in. That's why Christ in Revelation 1 and 2 and 3 talks about these dead churches. You know, one of them is Ephesus right here. He writes a lot of letters to Corinth. You know what they're not operating in? The power. And you know what the power comes from? It's called dunamis. It's a Greek word. It's the miracle working ability to do things of God through God. You don't do them. God does. You know how you do these things? By receiving the Holy Ghost and believing you can have it as a free gift and operating in faith. That's why Jesus was always rebuking him. Even like Peter when he got out of the boat. He walked on the water. You know what? That was powerful. But you know what? He, he fell in the water. You know what he said? Ye of little faith. It's, it's faith. There's a gift of faith. And, 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 and here's their answer. And they said unto him, look, we've not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. See, no one had told him that. But now that everybody knows this and it's recorded in the word, there's no excuse, saints. To not ask for this Holy Ghost to get that power to... To, to operate as we're, you're truly supposed to. This is not just for certain people. It's everybody. The word applies to everybody who's willing to believe. Both the Jew and the Gentile. And, 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 and uh, number three it says. And he said unto them. Unto what, unto what then were ye baptized? Now, now he, he's amazed because. Of his encounter, do you understand? He's relating, he's amazed because he's relating back to his encounter with Christ. And you know what? He's like, where's the power? Why ain't I seeing it? What were you baptized in? You know, he's, and, and they said unto John's baptism. Well, see, John can't give you the Holy Ghost. John's not the Christ. So then uh, Paul said, John verily baptized you with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that they should believe on him which should come after him, that is, on Christ Jesus. He was baptizing water baptism. A lot of people, I constantly get this question every day. You know, do I have to go get water baptized? And sometimes I'm wondering if I'm being tested. I don't know the answer to that. You need to take that to Jesus and not a man. But let me tell you one thing I do know. But Jesus Christ got water baptized. And after that, when he came and he gave them the Holy Ghost, read in the book of Acts. Get out of the law and all that for a while and go read the entire book of Acts. You know what they went? After Christ had came and gave them the Holy Ghost power, they ran around water baptizing people. I'm not saying it's mandatory and everybody says the thief on the cross. I'm saying, why would you not want to be baptized? If it's all throughout the word, Christ did it, others did it, that he empowered. I mean, think about it. Stop listening to what people say and YouTube say and ask Christ. But more importantly, look at his life. He did it. So, uh, so in five, now look, when they heard this, now you understand they got a revelation knowledge from an apostle here. They're disciples. He's an apostle. They were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Just like in Acts 2.38. A lot of people don't preach this. It'll change your life. They were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Let me tell you something here. They were water baptized. So a lot of people having a lot of questions. I pray that the Holy Spirit gave me this right on time word. Because, let me, uh, and, and then Paul had laid his hands upon them. See, on YouTube, uh, there's this isolation where you don't need a church. You don't need no laying on of the hands. Uh, 
you know, someone had said, what would Jesus do and all this? I'm going to tell you what Jesus would do if he was here right now. He would not be sitting on a computer. He'd be out laying hands on people. He went into he went to church all the time too. But see, YouTube is getting away from the truth, and I'm going to proclaim the truth from the rooftops that Jesus would go to church. He would fellowship. He always did. He would go disciple people. He would go lay hands on people. How do we know? Just by reading the gospel. So now after being water baptized, the apostle Paul laid his hands upon them. The Holy Ghost came upon them and then they spake with tongues. A lot of people heard me speak with tongues yesterday. A lot of people don't believe that. Like my father, he don't believe in speaking in tongues. Well, apparently he hasn't been given the revelation in Acts 19. And then what? After they spake in tongues, just like me in my little bedroom at age 15, I mean, just a young child, what did they do immediately? Prophesied. And all the men were about 12. You see that? This is amazing to me. I could have read anything, but I, when you get out of the way, you know why everything I'm saying is coming true? Not because I'm any great person or anything. I get out of the way. My videos run an hour and a half long. I delay in this and that. It's because I let the Holy Spirit speak. That's how the Bible was written. By, my, by men willing to let the Holy Spirit speak, even if it took days or weeks or months, rather than them, them speak. Otherwise, the Bible would be full of contradictions if it was written by men that didn't allow the Holy Ghost to use them. It'd be all contradicting, but it doesn't contradict. And neither should we contradict when we're operating under the Holy Ghost. So they did speak with tongues and they did prophesy. They were water baptized and they were filled with the Holy Ghost. Now Paul ministers in Ephesus. Now again, I'm going to put you back to Revelations 2, 1 and 7 that it shows what church he's talking about and how Christ feels about that church in the book of the Revelation. And he went into the synagogue and everybody says he goes into the church of Ephesus, which is a, also a city, and spake boldly, Everybody say, and he spake boldly for the space of three months, disputing and persuading the things concerning the kingdom of God. Sounds like he went in there and did like a correction and a rebuke to let them know, uh, you know, that kind of like uh, what had been revealed to him. He had a mighty encounter with Christ, and he's now letting them know how this church is supposed to run. The body of believers. That's all churches body of believers that are that are saved in Lord Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of their life and he's probably amazed these people don't even have the Holy Ghost when Jesus told them you got to have receive you the Holy Ghost he breathed it on them um, let me just share this real quick before we get too deep into this word when I began to see that 7337 and it's been confirmed twice now even by Rod I saw people in the spirit they weren't in the they weren't uh they didn't have bodies they were spirits they were they were people like you could tell like one was a man one was a woman there was a lot of them you could distinguish sex and stuff they were help me uh i repent i'm sorry no it, it was anguish and torment and uh there wasn't like flames you could just tell that uh that they were in darkness without God forever. And you know what? The one thing I'll take out of that is they were sorry. They, they knew they'd made an eternal mistake that damned them forever with no escape. And the cries were literally unbearable for me to hear. That's why I only saw it for like three seconds. Unbearable. Um... So before I went to bed last night, I said, Lord God, you've got me saying some pretty astounding things on here that are going to have a lot of people questioning, you know, can you give me a sign if I'm full of some, the devil got in or something, you know, or something you got to, you know, and some, cause I know he can get into anybody. Anybody can tap into a spirit of divination or I said, Lord God. And I, I went right to the throne of Jesus. I saw a bright light. 
I said, reveal unto me the truth. What is it you trying to tell me? Um, am I saying it right? And you know what I saw in the spirit? I saw people, now these people did have bodies. They were dressed and clothes and everything. They weren't transformed or glowing or anything. I don't know if they were like the dead in Christ. Uh, this hasn't been revealed to me yet. There was hundreds of these people, men and women, young and old, all flying up to heaven, just like all in a row. Boom, 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 boom. Just flying up to heaven. That's what I saw. Just wanted to share that with you. For, for those that are that follow my messages that I saw hell and then I saw the rapture of people being going up to heaven man and um, how can I not share that you would and, and so uh, now we're on verse 9 but when uh, diverse were hardened and believed not but spake evil of that way before the multitude they didn't receive them isn't that amazing? Here he comes in full of the Holy Ghost. He's baptizing people and they're getting blessed. This church at Ephesus didn't receive him. And they did it before the a multitude of people or a bunch of people. Look at what he did. He departed from them and separated the disciples. He he pulls away the 12 disciples, you know, to, to protect them, uh, you know, spiritually and, say, and, and saying, look, says, disputing daily in the school of one Tyrannus. And this continued by the space of two years. Apparently, see, he's, he's got this new revelation that people don't want to hear. Everybody look up. Uh, Tyrannus was a Greek uh, rhetorician, and he, and he had a school there. He, uh, over there, look it up. That's what I do. Just check all these things. There's a school. This was a school. So what he did was this is a, this is amazing. Thank you, Holy Spirit. He takes these twelve disciples over to the school of this Greek guy for two years and and teaches them uh, so that all that they which dwelt in Asia heard the word of the Lord Jesus, both Jews and Greeks. So they're in, they're in this Greek school being discipled by the Apostle Paul. And yet people say, oh, we don't need a pastor. We don't need anybody. We don't need a church. I'm just being real. YouTube, sometimes, you know, you can really get into bondage and really, I, you know, like people come to me all the time. They rebuke me privately saying there's no rapture and that I'm telling a lie. And then I look and they're, they're following Final Call 07, which preaches at the the Bible, the the Holy Word of God I'm reading to you right now that speaks life into you it, uh, is poison. That's what he said. He had a vision and it was poison. See, now that's a false vision. Why would God tell you his word is poison when it's a two-edged sword? Think about it. And, and so in verse 11 it says, And God wrought special miracles by the hands of Paul. Do you know there's a gift of miracles? One of the nine gifts is miracles. I prayed for it and I asked for it. Care for what you ask for. I may jack your whole life up in good ways and bad ways, uh, but you will see miracles. I mean, it, it, I asked for it in 07, and uh, here it is six years later. I'm seeing it. Nine, 937 when I saw that. 37. There's a miracle right there. 937. The number of the angels showed me and nine gifts of the Spirit, nine fruits of the Spirit. Mm -hmm. And a text coming in already. So that the body were brought unto the sick, handkerchiefs or aprons, and the diseases departed from them and the evil spirits went out of them. Now here's where, have you ever heard of like an anointing cloth? A lot of people don't believe in that. Well, here it is in the Word. I've ha I've, I've, I have an anointing cloth. So the the uh, special anointing was on somebody and I knew it and we were in a revival and he put oil on it and the Holy Spirit fell on it. it it's not him, it's the anointing that fell on these cloths and we all got one. And man, I used to sit out in my car with that thing and just lay it on my chest in gang member areas in my patrol car. Bullets are going off everywhere and just have total peace. 
They, so they take these anointing cloths, and look what happens. Diseases depart from them, and evil spirits went out of them. Why is the word, world so full of diseases and anointing, uh, 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 evil spirits, just d disease and demons apparently are everywhere running rampant right now. Yeah, as obvious, you don't have to be a rock scientist to figure that out. Because the men and women of God need to go to school and learn something and be baptized in the Holy Ghost. Am I telling the truth? And operate in this power and get these anointing cloths, start handing them out and start getting people uh, teaching the truth. And we will see a move of God like never before. But you got to be careful um, that, you, that you're doing it correctly. That's why Apostle Paul corrected the people they are doing it wrong and taught them. Because let's learn about the sons of Sceva. You ready? Verse 13. Then certain of the vagabond Jews, uh, exorcists, now these, are, these aren't Christians, mm -hmm. took upon them to call over them, which had evil spirits, the name of the Lord Jesus. Now what these two dudes, uh, these guys are called the sons of Sceva, they don't have the Holy Ghost. They, they haven't done the things, you know, that uh, they, they haven't been water baptized, baptized in the Holy Ghost and all that stuff. Apparently, they don't know who Jesus Christ is because things are going to go really bad for them. Watch. Uh, they, they go up to this person. See, so you can lay hands on people, too, if you have the Holy Ghost. You can cast out demons, too. You can, do, you know, do you know that you can lay hands on people? And say, receive you the Holy Ghost. And God will, uh, if they're willing to receive it, it'll come down from God and they can get the Holy Ghost. Did you know that? If you have the power. And verse 14, uh, look, look what they say here. They come up to someone full of demons and they say, uh, In the name of the Lord Jesus, saying, We adjure you by the Jesus whom Paul preaches. In other words, they didn't say in the name of Jesus and take authority and dominion. That they were given by Christ. They're trying to use Paul's authority and dominion. Do you get it? Not Christ's. And there were seven sons of one Siva. The seven sons of Siva it's called. A, a Jew and chief of the priests which did so. And the evil spirit. Now some people said you know. Oh man I heard a demon on your tape. Well demons can't talk. Well Legion spoke didn't he? Jesus said what is your name? My name is Legion and we are many. Here's one talking to these guys. This is really deep stuff. I'm, are you reading the same Bible I am? Acts 19, the book, King James. And the demon or evil spirit answered and said, Jesus I know, and Paul I know. Now you need to know demons know you and are watching you. And planning to try to... Uh, mess you up just like those disciples in the church were when apostle paul came and straightened them out with the holy ghost uh but who are you man that's pretty bad there and the man in whom the evil spirit was so they're trying to cast a demon out of this guy it leaped on them and overcame them and prevailed against them and overpowered them in other words like a zombie thing and they fled out of the house look at this naked and wounded they have a little zombie apocalypse bath salt incident there. You know why? Because they didn't know who Christ was and didn't have the power of the Holy Ghost. They got, they got, they got it handed to them. 17 says, and this was known to all the Jews and Greeks. This story went out. I mean, if this had happened right now, it'd be a viral video and a Twitter explosion and what do they call it, the Twitter sphere and all that stuff. And uh, it'd be uh, viral on Facebook and be shared with a, and it'd have a, a one billion likes. Just think of it. The world is back then was a lot smaller and they didn't have phones and that. But it, yeah, they knew. Yeah, the, the whole world went out, man. The, the sons of Sceva, these people that they had a Jewish priest and all that, it didn't work for them. They got it handed to them, man. They were naked and bloody. Uh, uh, and now look where they're dwelling at Ephesus, right? Go check out where that's at and read about it in the book of Revelation 2. And look what comes upon them now. Fear fell on them all. 
They, they got a reverential fear that God is real and Jesus is real. And the name of the Lord Jesus was magnified. So even in something bad, Jesus Christ turned it around for a good thing and he was glorified. He will always get the glory. And many that believe came and confessed and showed their deeds. That's what it's all about is winning souls. Many of them also which used... Now check this out. You want to talk about... You know, I'm going to just address a lot of things. So I, I pray people listen to this and maybe two hours. But this was... I haven't read ahead. But this is falling in line. I used to have a six-part series on spiritual house cleaning. After I went to my deliverance center because I hadn't got involved in the occult. Um, wasn't operating in the power. Um... I came out and I, I got rid of a lot of stuff like yin yang symbols and um, books on dream interpretation by a, a new ager called Mary Summer Rains and um, some uh, rap songs that were just totally violent like one said murder 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 kill 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 I think it was Tupac or who knows I, I you know I broke all that stuff and threw it in the trash. A good luck charm I had that I used to keep in my pocket. I used to play poker and go play slot machines and stuff. I'd always bring this good luck charm that was given to somebody who passed away. It was my good luck charm. There's no such thing as a good luck charm, man. You better get that out of your house. It's called spiritual house cleaning because Jesus said if you don't clean your house and a demon gets cast out and you, and you don't do the spiritual house cleaning, seven more worse than the first will come back. Read that. Seven. Just Google Jesus said seven demons worse than the first. Can you imagine if you already had a demon, seven more worse than that would come back. Now you got eight demons minimum in you. So let's read about this spiritual house cleaning. I'm to, this seems to be addressing almost all the questions I have, praise the Lord. Okay, so, so these people, they see that demons are real. And that the only way you can cast them out is through this Jesus Christ. And they're in Ephesus. So they believe, it says, and showed their deeds. In other words, they repented and confessed and turned away from their wicked ways. And many of them also, which had used curious arts, brought their books together. Who knows what books they were, but if it was curious arts, it was occultic. And they burned them before all men, and they counted the price of them. And found it 50,000 pieces of silver. I forgot. Someone did the math of then right now. How much money that represented today. You'd be surprised. I, I, it's a huge amount. Huge amount to this day. I mean. Have you ever seen like people doing a book and CD burning at a church. And people mock and laugh at them. And think what good does that make you holy or something. Well it's in the Bible. And nobody's preaching it. And what happened after they did that in Acts 19, verse 20? Check, check that out, that that's Acts 19, 19, spiritual house cleaning. Verse 20, here's the reward. Mightily grew the word of God, and it prevailed. See, remember when Apostle Paul first came there? It wasn't prevailed. He was being rejected. But after he showed how to do it right, and then God allowed these sons of Sceva to show him how to do it wrong, and they got beaten up and handed to him. Uh, now the word of God is prevailing in the area. And you know how? Through the power of the Holy Ghost. Without the power, they'd all been tore up. But let's, let's see what happens uh, because of this. There's division. It's going to be almost like a riot. Watch. And these things were ended. Paul purposed in the spirit. In other words, instead of in the flesh. You know, you hear me say a lot of people, others, they'll say I saw it in the spirit or I... You know, as led by the Lord. Another, another way you could read this is Paul being led by the Lord. You know, the Holy Spirit. Uh, that he, uh, that where he had passed through Macedonia and occasion. Now again, go look at that where that's at. I don't know if it's Macedonia or Macedonia. Uh, go look and see where that's at on the map. You see me Google Earth in a lot, or you just put it in um, Google Maps. And go to Jerusalem. So he's saying, look, he's telling these people after all that and everything's prevailing, everything seems to be in order. Now he's going to go to Jerusalem. Now. He didn't immediately go there. He waited three years. 
And he says, and after I've been there, I must also see Rome. You know why he's going to go see Rome? is because Rome, who's given him the orders to go kill Christians, this is amazing to me. That He had a Damascus experience. Paul, Paul, why do you persecute me? Well, because the Romans had him doing it. So he sent into Macedonia two of them that ministered in him. So he sends forth Timotheus and Aristus, but he stayed in Asia for another season. He for he, The whole period of time before he went to Jerusalem was three years. Isn't that amazing that people talk about these numbers don't mean nothing? And that, because uh, it, 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 we do things in seasons. When you're led by the Lord, you'll know seasons. In season, out of season. You ever heard that? We are in season right now, saints. 23 says, And the same time there arose no small stir. In other words, this was a big big deal. Uh, 24. For a certain man named Demetrius, a silversmith, which made silver shrines for Diana. You know, he's making idols to a false god. And he, also Paul had just got the whole area cleared up of this stuff. And, and he was making a lot of money. It says he it brought no small gain. In other words, uh, big gains. Uh, by his, This was his job, was to make money by uh, selling idols, occultic, uh, to false gods. Whom he called together with the workmen of like occupation. So he gets together all these other people that are also making occultic stuff. Now we have the occult meeting uh Holy Ghost filled men and women of God, right? And he says, check it out. Sirs, you know that by this craft we have our wealth. In other words, look, you're telling people to throw away things that's making us rich. Hmm. There's some revelation in that. Moreover, you see in here that not alone at Ephesus, but almost all throughout Asia. In other words, this ain't happening in, in just Ephesus anymore. This, this thing that Paul's preaching is spreading. we got to stop it. That's what I think they're thinking. Or else we're going to lose our businesses. Evil. This Paul had persuaded and turned away much people. See, they didn't want to go buy that stuff no more because their eyes had been opened, just like I opened up in my prayer. That they be no gods which are made with hands. In other words, don't worship false idols. Which is actually one of the Ten Commandments. So that not graven images. So that not only this, our craft is in danger to be set at naught, but also that the temple of the great goddess Diana. Now you should, okay, do some homework here during this fast to go find out who is this, this temple. There's a there's an evil temple of a goddess Diana that they made idols to, just like uh, other religions build these idols to worship that are that are graven and made with hands should be despised and her magnificence should be destroyed whom all the age in the world worship so according to this in acts 19 at that time they were worshiping they were bowing down to a graven image even after everything that the whole that we've been through since moses and them worshiping that calf here they are worshiping an image made by man not see what i mean there's the key it's made by man and they're worshiping this great goddess of Diana. And not only that, she has her own church. Man. Just like today in San Francisco. Did you know about 90 minutes from me or uh, approximately, they have the Church of Satan and uh, the Satanic Bible? Amazing, isn't it? And they'll tell you that they don't believe in the devil? Man. And they're making a lot of money. And so when they heard these, so, so he gathers all these people together and saying, look, we're going to go broke because of these Jesus freaks. <laughs> That's just my words. Uh, they were full of wrath. In other words, they all of a sudden got angry. And look, look what they said. They, they cried out. They screamed this. Great is Diana of the Ephesians. Yeah. Let's see about what Jesus has to say about that in Revelation 2. In the end. And the whole city was filled with what? What comes when you worship the devil? Confusion. You ever hear a lot of people come to your channel and say, you know what, I'm confused about something. Well, I can't help you with that. You need to seek Jesus if there's any confusion in your life because God is not the author of confusion. False gods are. Is this too deep? 
and having caught uh, Gaius and Aristius, uh, men of them, see these are men from the area he was at, Macedonia, Paul's companion in travel, they rushed with one accord into the theater. Now look, at here comes the big confrontation. Are you ready for this? This is like what happens on YouTube. The big confrontation. Truth versus lies. And when Paul would not, and Paul would have entered into the people, the disciples suffered him not. In other words, look, they're telling Paul, you don't want to go into this mess. These dudes are mad. They're rich. They got money. And there's a riot breaking out. And they're full of demons. You don't want to go there, Paul. We're trying to protect us. They had his back. But remember, how was he led there? By, by He was following the Holy Spirit. Not what men said. He was following God. And certain of the chief of Asia. You got this chief of Asia here. Which were his friends. Sent unto him. He, he had friends in high places. Amen. Desiring him that he would not adventure himself into the theater. You know, back then you, you never heard like the theater as a war. Like this is the war area here, the war area. Uh, no, don't want to enter into this battlefield, in other words. That's how I read it. Um, some therefore, in 32, some therefore cried one thing and some another. Some lie, some truth. For the assembly was confused. Because you know what? If there's demons everywhere, you can't see them, but they're there. How could they not be there when there's all these false gods and Diana worship? And the more poor part knew not wherefore they were come together. In other words, they were, the majority of the people didn't even know why they were there. But Satan knew. Here's 33. And they drew Alexander out of the multitude. They, uh, the Jews putting him forward. So they, they pull out Alexander. You'd have to do a deep study on this. I can't do it in just this one session. Alexander, uh, they pulled him out. <clears throat> um, he ties into the Apostle Paul in a, in, a, in a powerful way. They pull him out of the crowd. And Alexander beckoned with the hand and would have made his defiance and defense unto the people. In other words, he's getting ready to break them off on them with, you know, and tell them what's really going on. But when they knew that he was a Jew, all with one voice about the space of two hours cried out, they saw that he was a Jew. And they're, they're, they're uh, Gentiles. They, they're crying out for two hours, it says. There's the number two. Great is Diana of the Ephesians. They're crying out. I saw all these demon worshipers crying out to a demon. Hail Satan. Or, you know, that's what they'd say at the Church of San Francisco. I keep trying to reply it to real life events. And when the town clerk had appeased the people, in other words, someone tried to bring it in order, you know, like a police officer showing up and saying, order, 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 everybody calm down. Because we have a riot breaking out. Ye men of Ephesus, what man is there that knoweth not how that the city of the Ephesians is a worshiper of the great goddess Diana and of the image which fell down from Jupiter? That tells you what they're tapped into. There's a guy on here saying that, talking about Saturn all the time. Look, man, Jesus Christ, he says, don't worship the stars or study them. Stargazers, it's called. Woe unto ye stargazers, he said. Seeing then that these things cannot be spoken against, you ought to be quiet and do nothing rashly. In other words, look, man, you have no idea what you're getting into. You better hold your peace. See, because they already had the law from Moses for, and the, some of the prophets for written to study and know. For ye have brought hither these men which are neither robbers of churches nor yet blasphemers of your goddess. In other words, ye brought these people... That uh, wherefore if Demetrius and the craftsmen which are with him have a matter against any men, the law is open and there are deputies, let them implead one another. In other words, he's trying to order in the court, order in the court and get to the facts here, just like a courtroom almost. But if you inquire anything concerning other matters, it shall be determined in a lawful assembly. In other words, like if the police had came in here, They'd say, look, you, we can't just be riding out in the streets. You got one person saying one thing, Judge Judy, another third saying another thing. We got to get to the truth here, except the truth here, the judge is Jesus. Look at 40. For we are in danger to be called in question for this day's uproar. 
there being no cause whereby we may be given an account of this concourse. And we, had, when he had thus spoken, he dismissed the assembly. How long has it been? An hour? Um, I think I'll stop. Let me go to forward to 20 real quick. Let me close in prayer. Because this is fascinating, but this is all the Lord gave me. And I'll, I'll get it uploaded. What, what you're seeing here is that demons are real. You do need the power of the Holy Ghost or they can run over you. You do need to get your spiritual house cleaning. I do recommend you get water baptized and get full of this Holy Ghost and receive this power. And you do need to understand that on YouTube, there's some people telling the truth and there's some people telling a lie. And how are you going to know? By the Holy Spirit. Who are they worshiping? And another thing that I'm, is Paul was doing everything that's led by the Lord not by man so let, let's close out in prayer I believe there's if that can answer some questions uh, if you go to 1st Corinthians 12 it'll list the gifts the nine gifts I want you to know that the Apostle Paul wrote to the city of Corinth that you can eagerly desire these gifts but most of all to prophesy so when you see people on here prophesying they, they did what the word says to do and, the, and that they and the, that it allows you to do so and they come under attack all the time well do you know what it's not going to go well for these people in, in, in Acts 19 because Jesus Christ will always be glorified the demons have to leave when you know who they are uh, and and we can go around and lay hands on people we can win people to the Lord. We can correct them and teach them. We can cast out demons. We have been given this same power. It never stopped. Nowhere in here did it say, and on this day all these gifts stopped. The prophecy stopped. It never says that. Matter of fact, it says after Christ died, I'm going to close with this scripture. For Baptists, they believe that the, these gifts died when Christ died. Jesus would already ascended into heaven and sat at the right hand of God and said, I'm going to give you the Holy Ghost and power and you got to get baptized in it to receive the power. And then he gives, and all these people are now writing under the unction of the Holy Spirit and talking about gifts and that. The Apostle Paul, he said, for we know in part and we prophesy in part till that which is perfect is come. That's the seven, the number of perfection and completion. When Jesus Christ returns, he's that which is perfect. It says when he comes, well, he was already there when that was written. So obviously he's talking about a coming again. And until then, until he comes again, you can prophesy and you can know things. You may not know everything, but you can know enough as one body. And that's what you're seeing on YouTube is prophecy coming together by people prophesying just like the word says it can. After you get the Holy Ghost, you can cast out demons. After you get water baptized, you get the Holy Ghost. You don't get the Holy Ghost and then get baptized. You don't get the Holy Ghost before you receive salvation. It's all lined up in this one chapter. Let me close in prayer. Father God, this has been a mighty revelation you've given me. It's opened my eyes to know that I'm on the right track and on the right course. I pray that everybody within the sound of my voice receive the same revelations that I'm having and that we can use this, this, this powerful word that you've left for us in these final hours, Lord God, uh, you know, a day, whatever it may be, is a thousand years. I, I, I just honestly believe there isn't another thousand years left just according to the signs. With See, you've given me spiritual eyes and ears, Lord God, and I know better, and the devil ain't going to trick me. It says there's going to come a great deception and a strong delusion, and before that happens, would you empower us, Lord God, empower us with your wisdom and knowledge and understanding and your gifts and baptize everybody with the Holy Ghost so we can go out and reach the very loved ones I opened up in prayer with, Lord God, so they can be with us forever, so we can finish the Great Commission and finish this race and go home, Father God, but count us worthy. Bless everybody within the sound of my voice. I praise you, Jesus. I praise you, Jesus. I praise you, Jesus, as we fast and pray for you and await your soon return. Amen.